crafty friends. Oh my goodness. It's Saturday. It has been such a great day and having lots of fun cleaning. No, that's not fun. But anyway, um, it's that time that we are going to decorate our tiered tray here. You can notice that it is very empty right now. But the first thing that I did was I went to my craft stash of things that I use for my tiered trays year to year. And so I pulled out a few items for my base, which is also the first step when you're deciding on a tiered tray. So I know it's going to be St. Patrick's Day. I know there's going to be a lot of green. And I decided which tiered tray. Yes, I'm a nut. I have, I don't know. I think I counted, or I said at one time it was six and it's eight. And I don't even know anymore. But I knew that this was the right one because I want to show you how to do a book stack. And this is a magnolia book stack. I painted it green using a shamrock green. This is a larger book stack than what I normally do. Um, and I knew I was going to need a larger tray for that to fit on. So that was one reason I picked this one. And then as I went through all the things that I have, um, I found my mug. I found my my Irish tea, and I'll go on and tell you other things that I did find. And in doing that, I actually found that I don't believe that I need to create as many sign type things um, for this, but we are going to do a book stack, and we are going to use a mini cutting board that I didn't paint very well now that I see the side, but that's okay. I'll go back and shabby it later. So what are we using? The book stack, shamrocks. You notice this one has four. I bought these from Amazon, and you, if you have a glow forge, you could easily cut these out as well, as could I, but at the time that I ordered these, I did not have a glow forge, and now, of course, I do, and... I can cut my own. So um, let's see. We're going to use coal black. Bet you weren't expecting that. But that's what I'm going with. And then, oh, my brand new brilliant white chalk paste that I think just came a couple days ago. If you are, here's a hint, if you live in a cold climate such as I do, and you order chalk paste or ink, allow it to thaw out to room temperature before you ever use it. You don't want to use frozen chalk paste. Is it still good if it gets frozen? Absolutely. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing living in Minnesota, which, by the way, um, I'm a little bit chilled, but that's because we are going without my heater and we have turned down the heat upstairs as we're rolling into warmer temperatures. I think it's about 40 today. And so all of that makes a difference. And it looks like I bumped my light, light, <laughs> because I can see it up in the corner. But let's see, what else are we going to use? Um, well, my glue gun, of course. I painted this, this in the book stack, I think I told you I used an Irish green and I'm sorry, I don't recall, I think it was deco art. Um, and I'm also finding, tip two, that when you are using paint on these and you don't wanna do five million coats of paint, I found that dumping a little bit of paint out and letting it dry a little bit, and I'm not talking like totally dry, but let it just thicken up a little bit. Um, I can usually do this in two coats. So just that second tip to keep in mind. The other thing I'm gonna use today that I'm not sure I've used with you before, but it's, um, it's a burlap ribbon, but it's got a sticky back. Ha, I avoid that glue gun. 
And then over that, I'm going to use um, another Joanne. I think this was Joanne. Let me double check. No, Hobby Lobby ribbon um, with my little leprechauns on it. I don't know if you can see that. Ah, fun. And then um, that will require the glue gun. But my goal today is do not burn your fingers. So now that we've gotten through that, I think let's let's start with our mini cutting board. This was just painted with um, the Waverly chalk paint. And so I just wanted to make sure that, you know, that paint color. And the mini buffalo plaid is actually a two-part stencil. It actually also comes with um, polka dots. But I'm only using the mini buffalo plaid. This has been around for years, super popular. And until filigree leaf came out, this was one of my favorites. And Victorian, I think, is just a given. It's everybody's favorite. So I am just going to put this down and... This one has not been, glasses Lynn, this one has not been well loved. I think this is probably my, I use this a lot, or at least I used to lose, use it a lot. And so I've had many, many, many uses out of the ones that I've had. Um, but this one hasn't. And so I'm going to fuzz this so that I um, don't have it sticking. Now, before I do this, I'm going to tell you my tip number three. When you're using any kind of surface that you have painted, you want to make sure that you don't put your stencil right on top of that. So what I figured out years ago was that I actually preferred to clear coat them. Now, I use Rust-Oleum 2X Satin Clear Coat. So, I painted my pieces, and then when they were dry, I went ahead and um, clear coated them, and then I let that dry about 24 hours. If it can be dry to touch, and you think it's perfectly great, um, I did it in a hurry one day, which is usually when mistakes come. Of course, <coughs> they have, oh, excuse me. <coughs> I don't even have my heater on today. Of course, they also, um, you learn things by mistake, and mine was dry to touch the first time I ever did it, and I thought, oh, this is great. I can just go on and do this. And um, no, I actually ruined a stencil because I let this dry to touch and then put a stencil on and I pulled all of the clear coat up with my stencil. So now my rule of thumb is 24 hours. Another little tip, we're full of tips today, lots and lots of tips, is I take my grocery bag. My husband and I do furniture and the one thing that we have learned is when you're done, there can be little bumps. And anyone that comes in to buy furniture, the first thing they do is they rub their hand across it. Well, you want that to be smooth. So using a grocery bag, this has been clear coated and to get off anything that might be there, I'm just lightly rubbing back and forth. So again, this is not sanding paper. This is a grocery bag. Just do that on each one. You're taking a little bit of the shine off of it. Remember, I use satin. I don't use flat. You can use flat. If you're a glossy person, go ahead and use glossy. You're fine. How long are we going to wait after we clear coat a wood surface? 24 hours, exactly. So I'm going to put these aside and finish fuzzing over here. And this really doesn't take much. You just do this on your tacky towel and you're good. So, and I, I always tell um, people that, you know, if you think you haven't fuzzed enough because it's too sticky, just fuzz and fuzz again, uh, especially if you are using this on 
glass or metal because they will stick, 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 stick to glass and metal. And I don't want to do this right in the center. What am I thinking? I want to do this on the edge here. Let's see. I want to make sure. Oh, good. This is actually going to. This one's actually. So I'm just going to rub over lightly. Make sure that I have this down. And then I have been into my chalk paste already today. So I, they have been stirred. And I'm not going to stir them. Usually if it's the first time of the day I'm using them, I take a stir stick, just a plastic stir stick, and stir this. Oh my gosh, we are full of tips today. Because if you use a craft stick, and this goes for chalk paste as well as chalk paint, if you're using any kind of wood, you're helping that to dry out faster. We don't want our chalk paste to dry out any faster than it normally would. So I'm going to put that down, open this up, and I'm going to take my squeegee. This is a small squeegee. Do a little bit more. And then I'm just going to go over. Now I'm actually kind of hoping, I like this to look a little bit more vintage and so I think when it bleeds a little bit here or there it just gives it that more vintage look. If it comes out absolutely perfect I'm fine with that. Um, I'm actually hoping that it bleeds in a couple of places just so I have that more vintage look because I know I don't know if you noticed but on the sides I actually took sandpaper and sanded it down and um, sanded off some of that paint. Obviously I didn't do that on the one side or I just didn't do it enough but I'll have to go back and do that. Okay I'm just getting this down, getting my excess off. Oh come on. And I'm using just the, come on, I'm using just the end I don't want to get I don't want to get chalk paint paste on me. I was green and yellow yesterday and today I just today I just feel like like having clean hands. So let me see I'm going over making sure I have my excess off and that I have it covered. I'm just going to I'm going to squeegee that back in. And then I'm going to set this squeegee aside for cleaning when we're done to protect my chalk paste. Closing up right away. And then I'm going to peel this back. Oh, and with little pieces, you just have to hold on tight. Oh, good. I did get it to bleed in a few places, and I love that on here because doesn't that give it a more vintage look? It's not perfect. And I love that. Because one, you're using chalk paste and not vinyl, so you can make it look imperfect. So no, I'm not going to fix anything today. I actually like when there's just teeny tiny little bleeds and I'm going to set that stencil aside. And of course, I have black chalk paste on my finger. And I'm going to also set that aside to dry on its own. Okay, so book stack, and I've got some more tips for you here. So Magnolia comes out with a lot of what's called rolling pin stencils, they're words, and so for St. Patrick's Day, it's a small stencil, there's, there's four words on it, St. Patty's, Pinch me, Iris, Irish <laughs> kisses, and lucky. So I'm going to set pinch me aside because I don't want anybody to pinch me today or anytime. And then um, I'm not doing a stencil up on the top of this. I want to leave this plain, and you'll see why. It has to do with my tiered tray here. So I'm going to start 
at the top and I'm gonna do St. Patrick's Day. Notice I wrote the name on the back of my stencil and this has not been well loved so I'm gonna fuzz that a couple of times. Oh, come on. And then when I put this on here, I really want to take a look at it because I want about one finger from the edge. And then if I go through here, then I can see, and then roll over the top of it, I can see that my words are in a good place, that I'm not going <laughs> to go back and regret it. So I'm going to, I start at the top. Different people do this different ways. Um, and that's what's great is every creator does things a little bit different, but generally the same. And this is just to help keep my chalk paste from drying out. Let's stick that back in there. And then I'm going to take this. And what I'm going to do with this is I want to go across. And that's just so that I don't accidentally come down on my book. So again, this was clear coated. I shabbied it a little bit more. It's shabby when it comes, but I unshabbied it when I painted it. That S is not sticking down for me. So I'm going to look at this one more time. Okay, so I'm just going to take my squeegee. I'm offloading just a little bit. And then I'm coming across here. And actually, what I should have done is I'm going to get a different squeegee. I'm going to get what's called my cut apart squeegee. And it's because you can cut them in pieces. And so I'm cutting smaller ones so I don't have as much excess. So now I'm just going to peel my St. Paddy's Day. I'm going to set this one. Oops, i move that over there. And set this one down now because oh what do I have all over me um, because I am using chalk paste I don't have my little bowl of water I'm gonna take my heat gun or your dryer a hair dryer works just fine and I'm just gonna go back and forth over this to make sure that it's dry. Okay, so now what I do is I go down to the bottom. That gives my top more time to dry just in case I didn't get it as dry as it needed to be. We'll see, I can always tell my new stencils I can't get them off. Mostly because I cut my fingernails today and I don't have any. So I'm, again, I'm going to fuzz this just a couple of times. There's two sides to a tacky tile. T tacky tile. How about we say a tacky towel? And um, one side is microfiber and the other side is terry cloth. Some disagree with me on the different sides and um, I'm going with what I know. Just from having those back. Do you know I took a class in college? Ugh. And don't don't get me wrong, I, lo I loved my classes, especially my major. Oops, I don't like that one's up too high. And um, I see what's bugging me on this. I shabbied this a little bit more. Come on, Lynn. Let's go down a little bit. Okay, do I have one finger? And then... Okay, there we got it. Anyway, we had to identify textiles. And I'm just going to tell you, when you're 18 years old, if it's not cotton and polyester, do you really know what it is? And um, so, yeah, that was fun. And then we had to find samples of 
was probably a hundred different. Um, this was a class that I'm only people that were majoring in education had to take, but also those that were doing, um, I was going to say interior design. Okay, it's not interior design. It'll come to me. But anyway, um, and so for them, knowing these textiles are great, but I'm going to tell you this. I don't think I ever taught high school kids about different fabrics. I didn't far as far as how to wash particular fabrics, but since I didn't teach sewing, yay. Can you imagine teaching sewing with 30 kids in a classroom? No, thank you. I am so happy. I was never assigned sewing. Not that I can't. It's just that I don't want to teach high schoolers. Okay, and there's my Irish Kisses. So I'm going to do that same thing and set it aside. And I think, I think, I think that I'm going to, I'm going to set this aside and we're going to come back over here because this is dry. So we're heading back to my mini cutting board because this one is dry. What I'm doing here is I'm taking my time because I want to make sure that as I put that middle stencil down that I'm not hitting any of the other words and pulling up. So this is dry and just to make sure I'm going to go over it just a little bit again. And I'm going to take my four-leaf clover, because what that's lucky, right? And I'm going to grab my glue gun, and I am going to... And because I'm gluing this, I didn't take the time to really um, make sure that I painted the bag. Um, why? If you're, if you're going to glue it on anyway... Um, my time with crafting, especially since I have craft shows coming up, can be better spent. I love it. Right now, there's just all kinds of craft shows and things going on. Not that I'm participating in, but others are. And it's so fun to go and see all the new things that are out. Yes, this is me trying to center this. Okay, and I'm just going to put that down. Now I did leave enough room on the bottom that if I wanted to use Lucky again, but I tend to try to use different words, um, I could put Pinch Me on there, but I think I just like this. I think my husband's rubbing off on me. Um, just being very simple, more minimalist. And no, I hope you didn't hear me say that. So. Um, you can see that this is another piece that we have for our tiered tray. Then I'm going to, I, just to be sure, I'm going to make sure that all of this is dry, very dry, because that's what I want. I, I don't want to smear it, and I just want to make sure that everything is going really well with it. Ooh, did you see that? Uh, I'm so good at bumping things. Okay, so we've got that. Now let's go with Lucky. And you'll see why I'm keeping Lucky for this, because it has to do with, it has to do with my theme. Okay, so I'm gonna put this here. I think I want to go over just a little bit, totally eyeing this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just taking my finger down across there, and then I'm gonna go up. And yes, that part of my, my book is warm. And then I'm gonna, where am I? Um, I 
I think I want, I think I want this to go down just a little bit further. Let's see. Let me go over. I'm trying to line up those. And, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, I'm panicking, but that's just. No, it was much better where I was. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. The tricky part really is trying, because your letters on the, Lynn, because your letters on the end are so different, and here you are, you're trying to get them to kind of line up. I feel like this isn't straight. Are you straight? Nope, you're not straight. And I just, I, you can see I'm taking my time on this. And that's just because I, I want this to look really good. And I want it lined up. This is the, the book stacks are the kind of thing that if you have a mistake, it's glaring. I lost my squeegee. I'm going to grab another one. Again, this is that cut apart squeegee. And I'm using it because I'm in a smaller, come on, all oh, those dogs. The neighbors across the street have a dog, or two dogs. And whenever they go outside, my dogs know. And so they have to start barking. So their dogs bark at my dogs and my dogs bark right back. It's just, it's wonderful. It's wonderful, but they are also my keepers of the house, and they keep mommy safe during the day. Not that I live in an area that I need to worry about, but they think I do, and everything is stranger danger, so there we go. All right, let's pull this up. All righty, I'm going to set that one aside. All of those are going to be washed when I'm finished, and I want you to see, first I'm going to check it. <laughs> oh, this looks great. Lucky, <coughs> excuse me. Lucky is another one of those. Because it's a shamrock, it's not a letter, it just makes it really hard. So you see that? You see it from each angle. Okay, so we have our two pieces done and almost done. So let's dry this again. Because now comes to a part where I can really make a mess of things. I'm going to remind you one more time that you can use a hair dryer. You don't have to use a heat gun if you don't have one. Okay, so there we go. I'll show you that one more time. Now, here comes the tricky part. I need to put all my, putting all my stencil backers over here so that I can see what I'm doing. All right, um... Ribbon, ribbon, ribbon. I went back and forth on this one as to how I wanted to do this. And at the last minute, I, I was going back and through through ribbon. Which, by the way, the other day, Kirk, who made the ribbon holder for me, walked in and he said, Oh, I guess your ribbon rack is already overflowing. And I, I said, oh, yeah, yeah. It's been overflowing since he made it. And he just doesn't know, the, he just doesn't know where I stash all my stuff. Um, let's see, how do I want to do this? Okay, so I'm peeling this back. This is stick, whoop, this is sticky, okay? 
So it's not going to be real pleasant when it comes to boo-boos because it'll make a mess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this this way. And what I'm trying to do is figure out where I need to be. I think I'm good. Um, I just want to make sure that my book is on the end, that this is straight, and that when I pull it up, that it doesn't go all the way across because I have more embellishments, right? And so I'm going to, this is not like me today. Okay, so I'm, now I'm going to pull it up on the back side here. And then what I want it to do is come over. And I'm just going to clip this because it's going to go way over where I want it to anyway, I hope. And then I'm pulling it over here. And what I wanted it to do was pretty much land in about the center of my book. So right now, this is what we're looking like. And again, I think I picked this up at Joann's is what I'm going to say. And again, it's burlap, but it's burlap with a sticky back. And it actually comes in two sizes. Um, so like this, which is wider, I want to say that's about an inch. And then um, it also comes in I don't know, about half inch. So set that aside. Now, the tricky part. I have my my leprechauns here. Oops, help if I was on the right side of the book. Okay, so I want my leprechaun to have on the front, for the most part, he's not going to have that all the way. He would if I went down here, though. But if I do that, you know what, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to worry about him. Let's see, where is my... My halfway in the book. Yeah, about there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do just a little bit on this edge. So I've centered it. Oh, come on. My glue gun doesn't want to be my friend today. Okay, here, remember, Lynn's not going to... I'm not going to burn my finger. Whoa! Ah! Okay. Maybe I am. Just a second. Um, that caught on the very edge. I'm going to cut that. I'm going to cut that off. Now, as tight as I can, I'm going to pull my lap leprechaun all the way around here. Oh, silly me. Ugh. Okay, we're going to do a couple more little spots because he's moving. We don't want him to move. Oh, come on, glue. Yeah, I have hot glue on there. Ooh. Okay, as for not burning my finger today, yeah, it happened. It happened. So that, that glue did take. I wasn't sure that it did and when I went to get my glue gun yeah I managed to burn my finger I'm gonna take that over here and again I'm staying in the center of this and then I'm gonna come up my back edge and I'm gonna do that same thing at the top of this edge I'm just gonna put a little maybe a little a little bit of glue and oops and then i'm going to pull it up to my other shamrock and if i cut it correctly let's see where do we want to be i'm going to take my chance and i'm going to cut right here and i 
did not cut that straight, did I? Oh, it's not gonna, you know what? It's not gonna matter because that's gonna be covered. So then I'm gonna go to the tip of this, a little, little bit of glue, and then I'm gonna move my little leprechaun up to here. Now the reason I'm not worried about him coming up in the middle of a leprechaun is because, oh, I got some glue there. It doesn't look straight on this bottom. Perfectionist, knock it up. So, I have, I went through and I thought, oh, I have buttons. Buttons could be fun. And then I found my teeny tiny little flowers. And I thought, well, maybe a flower would be better. And I'm just cutting this little guy down so that it's not sticking out. So I thought, okay, I could put a flower there. And then, I don't know if I like that. And then <clears throat> somebody had buttons that came in three different sizes, and they're all basically the same. They're green and black. So looking at the biggest one, I could just go with that. Or to give this a little bit more stability, I could glue... Uh, was hoping that I trim this down so it would fit in one of the buttonholes, but I don't think that's going to work. So I could stick it. Oh, I know it'll work. I know it'll work. If I cut down these sides, I don't know how well you can see that, but I'm just cutting down the sides so I can smush it. Not that I like doing that with flowers, but since it's an artificial flower and it's got a fake little stem here. Or I could do something like this. Like that. And so, actually, let's try it this way. That I would have my flower on top of it. And you know what? I'm not liking it. I'm going with my button. Keeping it simple. So we're going to go with our button. And so I'm going to put my glue there. And yes, this is going to come right through my button. I can feel it. I'm going to grab one of my... Notice how I'm not putting them on my fingers. I have more control. I have much more control. So what happens here is this guy... This guy ends up with the top of his hat and then his beard. So he ends up pretty doing pretty well. Okay, so we have those done. I just want to set some of this apart so we have room to work our magic. So let's go over here to our tiered tray and see what we can do. Correct me if I'm wrong because I'm kind of doing this backwards. So I think what I I want to do is start with my window. Again, this, oh, excuse me, this was done on Glowforge, and then I just shabby, shabby, shabbied it after I painted it. Now, normally, if we were doing this on our Glowforge, we would paint it first and then cut it out, but I didn't know what I was going to do with it. And I know this is a little bit big, so I'm just going to stick that underneath here. So you see it's sticking out a little bit here. Let's see, what else do I want to put on next? Oh, oh, oh. I have to have my Irish Blessings mug. Isn't this cute? I was out in Alexandria, Old Town Alexandria in Virginia, and I ran across this Irish shop, and they had this mug, and I just thought it was so adorable. Of course, that was about 15 years ago. Now you can find, probably find it on online somewhere. So I'm going to put that up there. And then, <clears throat> do I have that centered? I hope so. Um, and then, of course, <clears throat> if you're going to have your mug, okay, it's not a teacup. It's a mug, but I like tea, so I have teas in mugs. So I've got my <clears throat> classic Irish breakfast tea. And you know what? It it's a really good tea, but I don't I don't like black tea. I drink green tea. 
I could have put my green tea up there instead, but no, Irish. Um, let's see. What else do I want to put there? Well, you know what? I'm not going to go with my core pieces first. I'm actually going to add my, my book stack. But <clears throat> I had made... I had made this um, a few years ago. I know you can't see the top of my head, but, you know, the tiered tray is far more important. In fact, you know what? Let's move this right up here on my table so you can see better what I'm, I'm doing. Is that better? I don't know. Maybe now it's too high. It's really hard for me to tell from my angles. Okay. Nope, you know what? I like it back on this table better. Sorry about that. I'm hoping you can see all of that. This table is just a little, little bit shorter. So anyway, <clears throat> rainbow. And these are driving me crazy, so I'm actually going to put some saran wrap around this to hold this so it's not flying out all over the place. And then all I did down here was I took gold coins from Dollar Tree and I just, I glued it on the end. I didn't put a hole in it. I didn't do anything. So actually I'm going to remove this and I'm going to put this I think it needs to go I think it needs to go around. There, so we've got our rainbow, right? Put my coffee cup back up here. And what I like about this is that both sides of the mug have the saying on it, so I can choose whichever way I want to do that. Um, I threw some Dollar Tree flowers in there just to spruce it up. And then I think what I want to do is I'm going to take, is he just cute? I love his legs um, and his little Irish flag. In my Finnish, Swedish, Norwegian house, you cannot go without a gnome on a tiered tray. So we're just going to kind of cross his legs a little bit. And then, oh, you know what? We have we have our rainbow. I can't see this well. i got to move over here and see if I can see what I'm doing here. Oh, your turn just a little bit. Let's get, um, we need gold, right? Because if we have our rainbow, you're supposed to find gold at the end of the rainbow. So I'm just going to kind of sprinkle my gold. And then, and again, that was Dollar Tree as well. And then I have one of their little pots. But if you buy a bag of gold and a pot, they all just kind of sink down in there. So underneath, I actually rolled up a bunch of, like a ball of yarn. And then they have... The thicker glittery type of um, gold coins and so I didn't really care for them so I stuck those in the bottom because I wanted this to really look like it was overflowing and I'm going to put it right here so it shows we found our pot of gold at the end of the rainbow and then let's see what else do we need um <laughs> I think we need some kind of flowers. Again, these I just clipped, um, pulled out my little glass. Let's see, I think I'm going to try to turn them more that way. Does that kind of cover that hole in there? And then, um, well, let's see. Oh. I bought this train set. There's three pieces to it. I'm not using the whole thing. I bought this on Amazon, oh, I don't know, maybe five years ago. And <clears throat> all of my little leprechauns are just, they're just having way too much fun driving the train and holding on for dear life. So I'm going to put him over here. I think I might have to pull him over a little bit. And then I'm feeling like I need something else. How about you go with, um, this says Blarney Express. So how about we put him up here? 
I'm going to leave the caboose off. Let's see, is there anything else we need? I need to walk to the other side so I can, I'm going to pull him over a little bit so that I can actually see how this looks because I was doing it kind of blind there. And I like his look. I feel like I have. I feel like I have missing spaces. Oh, I do have missing spaces because I didn't do this. So let's see. Hmm. I think I might pull this and then stick this one on the side. And I'm going to put this on the back because as you walk around a tiered tray, you want to see all the things that are there. And so I don't have my Lazy Susan, so I'm going to carefully turn this tiered tray so you can see how it looks as we go all the way around. And then I can also make some changes if I wanted to. So we're coming around now to the back. And the great thing about my little leprechaun thing is both, oh, you know what? I have a new idea. I have a new idea. You know what? I can't move it if I with this idea because it'll fall, but let's see. How about, let's see, how do I want to do this? I'm thinking if I put, how do I like that? I'll put that out there. This shows on both sides, as does the T. And so as you go around, then you see them in the front. I hide this little chain. In the front and back. So I need to hear from you. What do you think of our tiered tray? Did we do well? So to make something like that, Dollar Tree. Definitely. I'm not into the real glittery flowers. It's St. Patrick's Day. Let's have some fun. It's just fun. Um, Amazon is my best place to buy wooden beads. These are 16 millimeter. Love them. My favorite size. Um, this little guy, I think I came across at a craft show. I, I love to support other small businesses. And that's where that came from. Um, this, obviously, the grocery store. And like I said, I had been out and um, out to Old Town Alexandria, which is a beautiful place across the river from Washington, D.C. and Very historic, and history is my thing. And so if you ever get a chance to go, I think that... <laughs> I told you that was going to happen. Oh, Lynn, 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 Lynn. Oh. To hear my mother and see her just shaking her head. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. If you didn't catch all those tips, head back and replay. And if you absolutely loved what you see, share with your friends. Tell them to come on over. Join the gang. We have lots of fun. And I always enjoy meeting new people and having fun. But most of all, I love teaching and teaching you how you can create tiered trays and other crafts and decor inexpensively. So until next time, it's just going to be happy crafting and enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. We'll see you next time.